Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. Government to forge ahead with the first phase of the National Health Insurance. The Chief Medical Officer prepares the nation to coexist with COVID-19. And assessing remote learning as schools remain closed due to COVID-19. The fifth session of the 11th Parliament opened Tuesday, 28th April 2020 in Castries with the delivery of the throne speech by Governor-General, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. However, due to COVID-19 protocols, the Governor-General presented the throne speech via video. It was a stark reminder of the impact COVID-19 has had on all aspects of life here in St. Lucia and the wider world, and the throne speech reflected as much. Given the importance of the healthcare system in the fight against COVID-19 and the critical need for all St. Lucians to have access to quality care, Sir Neville announced that the government of St. Lucia is forging ahead with the first phase of the National Health Insurance. Legislation to define and effect the governance structure for the National Health Insurance will be enacted during this financial year, 2020-2021. My government will tackle communicable diseases by improving health facilities and laboratory capacity and strengthening public health surveillance and emergency management capabilities. In this way, it will be possible to rapidly identify, control and eventually eliminate re-emerging and emerging infectious diseases. And Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chastney, will on Wednesday, 29th April 2020, present St. Lucia's Estimate of Revenue and Expenditure for 2020-2021 at 10 a.m. The House of Assembly will be asked to adopt the report of the Standing Finance Committee on the estimates of expenditure for the financial year 2020-2021 in the sum of $1,697,312,800. The amount to be charged against the Consolidated Fund and other funds of the State of St. Lucia. In keeping with the protocols established for management of the COVID-19, members of the public will not be allowed in the chamber gallery during the sitting. The public can view the live proceedings on the National Television Network, NTN, Channel 122, Government of St. Lucia Facebook page and YouTube, as well as other local stations. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is still implementing the national response to the COVID-19 pandemic, notwithstanding the 100% recovery rate of COVID patients recorded here recently. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george says the nation must remain focused and committed to the actions for reducing the spread of this virus. Dr. Belmar george says it is still difficult to accurately predict how the pandemic will progress for us in St. Lucia, Given that with the gradual reopening of services, the risk of transmission is increased. However, the CMO says the reality is St. Lucia cannot remain closed indefinitely. Our assumption is the likely scenario for the epidemic within our context shall be recurring waves with low level transmission. This requires that the public work closely with us in maintaining the physical distancing measures at all times. The public must note that COVID-19 remains in all regions around us and given it is a new virus, our entire population is at risk of getting it at some point in time. As such, we need to learn to live safely in this COVID-19 environment. Dr. Belmar George emphasized that every single sector must prepare for the new way of operating by following the protocols established by the government of St. Lucia. During the coming weeks, public health and primary health care teams will be providing information to support the populace as we all transition to coexisting with COVID-19. One such aspect includes the need to ensure our immune system is functioning at its best. This requires a balanced, healthy diet, including the recommended daily servings of fruits and vegetables, drinking water throughout the day, regular exercise, adequate rest, sleep, and managing our stress level to keep it to a minimum. Also, the avoidance of smoking, drugs and excessive alcohol intake 
which are all detrimental to the body and limits our ability to properly manage illnesses. The CMO says periodically additional public health and social measures may still need to be instituted to restrict and reduce movement based on the stage of the outbreak. The St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce conducted a survey looking at the impact of COVID-19 on businesses among its membership. The survey was completed between April 6 to 15, 2020. Approximately 30% of the chamber membership responded. 52% of the respondents indicated that they were still operational amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Of those not operational, 40% reported that it was due to the virus while the balance, 60%, indicated that they were not operational due to the scale-down of the economic activity. 33% of respondents employ more than 50 employees, and overall 60% employ more than 20 persons. 67% of all respondents indicate that they have maintained full employment at this time. 65% indicate that full employment can only be maintained for one to two months. Of the firms who have retained employees, 67% of them indicated that the employees receive full pay. Respondents indicate that while full pay was paid in March, this will not be the case for April for many persons. Of the respondents, 33% who did not maintain full employment, 36% reported retaining between 1 to 25% of employees. 21% indicated that 26 to 50% was retained, while 36% reported retaining between 51 to 75%, and the balance, 7%, reported retaining over 75%. 53% of respondents who indicated that they did not retain all staff reported that the staff who were not retained are getting paid or receiving in-kind contributions, that is, groceries, and receiving 50% of pay. 38% of respondents report that they anticipate an over 75% decline in business as a result of the pandemic. 31% anticipate losses of between 26 to 50%, 19% expected declines of between 1 to 25%, while 13% anticipate declines of between 51 to 75%. Understanding the major impact tourism has on the economy and on most businesses in St. Lucia, either directly or indirectly, members were asked about the impact they expect the decline of tourism to have on the businesses described as a zero tourism climate. In a zero-tourism climate, 39% of respondents believe that their business can only survive three to four months. 23% indicate that their business could last over six months. 19 indicated that they can last five to six months. And 16% stated that they can last one to two months. Meantime, Chief Economist in the Ministry of Finance, Janai Leos, says the financial strain that COVID-19 has brought to bear on the business community is not lost on the government, as the government too is experiencing massive shortfalls in revenue. Speaking during an NTN panel discussion on the economic impact of COVID-19, the Chief Economist indicated that a number of proposals aimed at stabilizing the private sector are being finalized. In many countries, whether you look at the U.S., whether you look at Canada, or what have you, what you saw happening was an injection of funds, whether it be by way of loan, whether it be by way of grant. We may have to explore the extent to which you have small, medium, large-scale businesses, and you have similar loan-slash-grant facilities available to, to, to firms to treat some of their working capital needs and, and what have you. And we will definitely work with the international community and with the, the banking system to facilitate those sorts of injections. Now, granted, given where the state is, the extent and the size of these would not be near what you have seen at the markets. But stabilizing your populace that has been displaced by COVID and also assisting your, your, your firms in some of, meeting some of their working capital needs and what have you will definitely form, form key tenants of a economic stimulus going, going forward. Chief Economist in the Ministry of Finance, Janai Leos. Students, teachers and parents have completed the first week of the new academic term remotely as schools remain closed amid COVID-19. Anisia Antoine reports. Students have begun settling into the third term as they are now in the second week of adapting to paper-based instruction and e-learning. 
parents have entered a new reality managing their children's education from the confines of their home. District 2 Education Officer Martha Foster encouraged parents to be patient during this transition given that challenges may arise. Foster expressed gratitude to the principals, teachers and parents for their efforts in adjusting to this new environment for the benefit of the students. It speaks highly to your commitment to your craft and love for your students. And for this, I am eternally grateful. Further, your flexibility and courage being demonstrated as you venture beyond the known and familiar are commendable because undoubtedly the extent to which our dearest students and parents ride this new wave, the level of comfort and ease with which they make this transition is highly dependent on you and your attitude. The District 2 Education Officer noted that a dedicated support system has been assigned for students in need of psychological support. An interactive platform has also been created to facilitate the interaction with school counsellors. Patricia Gabriel Valser, District 2 Counsellor, gave helpful tips to parents and students on ways to maneuver this new method of learning. For now, you are online learners. When you are in your online classroom, I want you to follow the rules as your teachers tell you. Be polite and respectful to your classmates and teachers. Make sure to do your assignments. Make time to read, rest, and of course play. Now I would like to speak with your parents. Parents, it is a trying time. Take it one minute, one hour, one day at a time. Seek help with online challenges from other parents and the teacher. Ensure that your children are safe online. Limit the time online to class time and assignments. Let them play and sleep and ensure that they eat. Chief Education Officer Fiona Meyer stated that the main goal is to ensure that all students remain actively engaged in their studies in a healthy environment. We want you to really take time to listen to your child, to be with your child, to not put unnecessary pressure in terms of finishing up worksheets, but to really listen to them, support them, be consistent, do the work, get the feedback to the teachers. But really, really important is to find a spot where our students feel loved, they feel valued, they feel emotionally attached to their families. So this is the first point for our parents. This is what we want you to really embrace. We note many of our teachers have gone, and as I've said previously, they've inspired me. They have gone above and beyond. They are working and our parents meet me and they say to me, Mrs. Meyer, this is what has happened. This is the kind of feedback I've gotten from my teachers. So we want to say to them, our administrators, keep up the good work. We've only just begun. So we don't want to start with a bang and then slow down, but we want to make sure that whatever happens is consistent and that instruction remains our primary objective, which is what our responsibility is. The Chief Education Officer reaffirmed the Ministry of Education's commitment to ensuring principals, teachers and parents receive the necessary support to ensure the success of the students' education. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back.
We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creol. Monsieur Tarjanel, Monsieur Madame, Department of Universal Responsibility, Reformation and Government Service, GIS Assembly Television National Pia, NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle au Creol. Presidente Primus Hutchinson. Le chauffeur auto j'a trouvé bonne nouvelle concernant qui quantité passage yo kaisa chaye a boloto yo après ça depuis maladie corona tombé à son pays à département santé te réduit à ce qui quantité moun qui sa voyager à boyo l'auto passager le mois c'était 10 en commencement mais après ça descend pour 7 ministre la kenya responsabilité pour transportation et développement économique on va Guy Joseph déclare qui le gouvernement examine la situation à présent et la manière publique là, qui a comporté Koyo en bas de la maladie de Corona. Il est satisfait qu'il ait soulagé la situation et qu'il permet de l'auto sala pour chaire plus de passagers pour le présent. Selon le ministre des Affaires et Transportation, le gouvernement a battu le ministère de la Santé satisfait que les membres publics là, qui ont respecté ces règles là, qui ont gouverné l'approchement pour la maladie de Corona. Alors, par conséquence, la décision j'a faite pour permettre l'autopassager pour chaire 9 passagers en dit de comme qui était fait avant. Et ma vie nous garde là, si par des temps, Minibus Association n'a pas commandé pour ça chaire 10 personnes, Minibus sont d'accord pour ça chaire 9 personnes. Oui, le premier ministre n'a pas adoué ça, c'est parce que pour bon matin, nous stylons le canon discussion à sous qui manière nous t'écaille au poé et nous pas te faire en décision côté nous pas te ni bénédiction et ben nous pas te ni ministre ça t'écaille pour vous décision qui t'écaille fait là et clairement parler by si un mois bon matin nous nous d'accord dans nous ça fait c'est bas la chaire neuf moun, so ça c'est deux moun à sous chaque c'est um, rosit la, because c'est bas la chaire quinze moun et ben quatorze moun na yoni yoni quatre rosit de a exit devant, so à sous chaque c'est sit la um, kaini deux moun, yon à chaque coin bas la et Douvan ka ni yon ek chauffe a. So sa ka fe nef pasaje ek chauffe a men ka fe dis. Ono ap Gai Joseph ka osi konseye le pasaje pou servi mas a Sofi Jayo le yo ka voyaje a bo se douto pasaje pe ya. Ek osi yo si pose chen se fi net la se loto a ouve. Nous ne pouvons pas laisser l'auto à servir et condition les gens qui ont chahi, c'est mon ça parce que vous voulez voir ce qui est bien à dire transport. Parce que la terre, même pour qu'on finisse de comprendre entièrement qui manie la COVID ça a cassé, mais from yon moun pour l'autre. So, nous ne pouvons pas prendre toute précaution nous ça pour ça empêcher situation a argumenté en bien vin plus mauvais en cette ici. So nous d'accord avec ces uh, minibus association là dat yo ka chaye neuf passagers à bord ces bus là de à chaque site et qui yon devant tout moun si pose ni masio en figio et tout moun aussi si pose assis en coin bus là et chen ces fenêtres là ouvert. Monsieur madame en continuation nous aujourd'hui, concernant l'adresse du Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasné à sa situation économique cette fois-ci en bas de la maladie Corona, le Premier ministre Chasné a annoncé qu'il plongeait en place pour permettre les étrangers pour vivre qu'à visiter cette fois-ci. Selon le Premier ministre, la phase de la phase de la phase de de la septembre de la phase 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 la phase la la j'ai l'argent qui peut y avoir en bas maladie corona. Yo kai kat même ni pour payer ça l'est. Et commitment pour dette gouvernement qui a doué 
et aussi pour dépasser côté commitment gouvernement ho Premier ministre Chasné remarque que le gouvernement a établi un comité pour ménager l'économie et pour adresser ces pertes sociales que le pays a déjà expérimenté. Le comité a en bas conduit le Premier ministre là, et le ministre des Affaires Finances et aussi le ministre des Affaires Touristiques, Éducation, Développement économique et Agriculture. Le Premier ministre Chasné a aussi remercié ces divers secteurs et ces unions pour la participation à la bataille contre la maladie corona. En continuation, négociation et puis service civil PIA, Premier ministre Chasné fait un appel pour l'année non acte en façon de négociation. Si le Premier ministre là, l'a révisé la longue large PIA a été amassée depuis avril l'année 2017, ça a descendu ça, ça descend très bas pour les ça. En mois d'avril, PIA a amassé 70 millions de dollars. En l'année 2018, PIA a amassé 87 millions. En 2019, Johnson, Yon Million, et pour, uh, pour, pour avril l'année ça, c'est seulement 40 millions. Premier ministre a fait annoncement, a fait comprendre que le vote civil a continué pour trouver sa salaire pendant le fort gouvernement, j'ai réduit pas 60% en mois d'avril seulement. Et la situation ça, a continué pour juste mois juillet. Premier ministre a dit que est très difficile pour yon de déterminer qui quantité longtemps et qui est avant de payer à chaper et tièrement avant la maladie corona. Premier ministre de l'Ontario, Alain Chasney, a annoncé que, commencé depuis lundi qui passé, le gouvernement a pris une décision pour continuer à chaîne payer à basse direction toujours, mais il a décidé aussi pour augmenter à son activité à ce secteur. L'Église qui tenait permission pour quitter en 10 personnes semblées, car à présent, ça a embrassé plus même de pas à ce grand de l'église. Mais aussi, il n'y a pas respecter 6 pieds de distance contre des habitudes. Le Premier ministre a annoncé aussi la business construction, car il y a un opéré, mais en bas, oui, qui est bien sérieux, que le ministère des Travaux et de la Construction a établi. Commencez, c'est même ça là aussi. Le Premier ministre Chasne a déclaré que... Tout bureau docteur privé qui a été viré en opération, là, il y a aussi considération pour tailler et couturier et l'autre qui a une profession, ça là, pour virer en opération. Comme il y a un brisé produit masse pour Fidjaï et l'autre nécessité pour abattre la maladie de Corona. Magasin a été opéré aussi et aussi l'autre magasin qui a produit des outils pour couturier et tailler. Mais le Premier ministre Chasné a fait public la savent qui Confioua qui a continué depuis 7 heures soir pour ce que bon matin. Nous vous invite à écouter le programme demain, si vous conservez la vie, pour tenir un rapport à son adresse gouverneur général pour le commencement de l'autre session nouveau en Kai Parlement. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour votre invitation. Je ne peux pas considérer conserver la vie et vous avez une nouvelle en Koyol. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.